for weekly podcast on all things academia. I'm Chris. With me is Robert. Hello. And Stephen. And Stephen. And well, I had to pause there because I almost actually called you Jesse uh, because <laughs> we had just got done. Anyway, uh, so yeah, so pardon me, folks. Um, well, uh, I know I just screwed up, but if you like what you hear, uh, click like or subscribe, um, either on YouTube or iTunes, and uh, leave us some feedback. Um, and uh, Feedback number one, learn all your, your co-hosts. Yeah, I, it's too many things going on in my life right now, and I just, uh, yeah, brain fart, you know. So, um, so yeah, Steven, how was your last ultra marathon? Mm, yeah. Yeah. No. <clears throat> so leave us some feedback if you would please and also we'd be we'd be happy to hear show suggestions if you have a topic you'd like to hear us talk about feel free to um drop us an email or tweet us at professor's life uh to suggest things so this week we are going to be talking about teaching evaluations uh, i think we should start with how, how, how evaluations are done at our individual schools. Okay. Because there might be some variation from one place to another. So for example, with, with us, at my school, what we do is the last uh, two weeks, we open this window of teaching evaluations and we're not doing anything online. It's still paper and pencil. And um, then basically you uh, arrange for another faculty member to uh, give your teaching evaluations. They, they come into your classroom, they hand out the packets, the students fill out, there's two sheets, there's a white sheet and a blue sheet. The white sheet's a bubble sheet with numbers. The blue sheet, in my opinion, is the more valuable sheet. Those are handwritten comments. And then um, the administrator of the uh, evaluations collects them, takes them to the professor who's being evaluated. They sign the envelope without seeing the evaluations. They sign it, and then it goes to the department secretary to type up. And a couple months later, and it's not usually a couple months, a month or so later, you get your uh, typed up teaching evaluations and your little numbers report. <laughs> so I bet you guys are probably living in the 21st century and doing them online. Yeah. Yes. Is, uh, yeah. So the way ours work, which I think, unless Penn State's changed theirs, be the same way for Stephen. Uh, it's the last two weeks of class, and they can take them whenever they feel like it. It's online. And they'll do it or they won't and you have no clue whether one person filled that out none of them filled it out all of them filled it out it's not until true. you okay. get your mysterious results <clears throat> we have a little bit better i guess uh, as they're going through the window of whatever time they have we get to see what percentage of the class has actually got it finished oh, great. Uh, so there's something there uh, so i looked today that my class that finished up last week well the class that started and finished last week uh, one of my classes, I have 18% finished, and I think they have until um, tomorrow to get them done. So 18%, woo! Is that That's normal? something else. Uh, <sighs> when it was paper, had almost 100%. Right. And sure. Since it's gone online, I don't think I've had ever had more than 30. No, wow. what I do to beg them to fill them out. Yeah, I mean, I sometimes can get up to 40 or 50, but I've never been above 50, I think. Um, Is it, that a it, problem for your untenured folks? Well... <laughs> the problem with now they insist this absolutely didn't happen and they're lying through their teeth uh, results went from being fairly normally distributed yeah. to completely bimodal yeah you get one it's become rate my professor you get yeah. the people that love you and the people that hate you and the people that think yeah don't bother to fill it out right do they do they have the chili pepper option on your teaching evaluations <laughs> they should <laughs> no <laughs> it's actually increase uh, <laughs> Yeah, and uh, we've been specifically told we can't do anything yeah. um, to try to, we can't bribe them to fill them out. We can't take them over to a computer lab and say, sit here for an hour uh, and fill them out. And we're not allowed to do anything to try to up the numbers other than say, please do them. Right. I even got comments last year about, from the students, that I apparently was too insistent in trying to get them to do the evaluations. And that hurt my evaluations. So, you know, that was nice. Yeah, it's become uh, complete crap. Yeah, it's a lot more noise. This would be concerning to me if I were a uh, assistant professor untenured, mm -hmm. right? Um, especially at an institution where your teaching performance is a major element of your promotion, right? And your yep. tenure decisions. Yep. Uh, and you're only getting 20, 30% of your students. And on top of that, you're getting a bimodal distribution. 
Yeah. I mean, what do you do with that? Well, you can still game it. Uh, yeah, sure. To make sure that the one pull is higher than the other. Mm -hmm. um, this is one thing I've always had a problem with these student evals. Uh, and the same with even peer evals uh, to a large degree. If you're new, uh, peer evals are great for helping being developmental to help new faculty done by you know more senior faculty both in and out of your field because the ones out of your field can tell you style comments and they won't get caught up on the content which is kind of helpful you right know, this is the way you teach i have no idea what you were talking about but this you know and then ones in your field can tell you whether you've conveyed the information well i think that's great for junior faculty and then the student evals at least can tell you whether you're popular yeah uh, with the students yeah. for junior faculty and then hopefully some senior faculty will get with you and tell you how to play it. Right. Um, yeah. Cause they're, they're easily, they're very manipulable, mm. especially when they were paper, when no. they were paper, you knew exactly what day it was going to be done on. And you could, you know, you can set the arc of uh, how things go to, to peak, you know, at that moment. Well, I, I always used to, when teaching negotiation, I would actually, uh, before I handed out the evaluations, I would talk about influence. And how, for example, let's talk about ways that people could influence you to, on your teaching evals. And then I would go through the things. Oh, you know how some people, you know, you might show up in their class and they have cookies for you. Or they have pizza. Or they would do, they'd give you a day off. Or they would do this. And I would go through the whole rhetoric. And what does that mean? And what does that do to you? And so we talk all about influence. And I say, obviously, I would never attempt to influence you in the course of evaluations. You know, that's not my goal at all. All right, so what I want to say then is I'm done here today. Please do these course evaluations. They're really helpful. And by the way, there's no class next uh, next period. Thanks, folks. See ya. Um, and then 90% of the class would get it, but yeah. After the evals, you don't know that I've just slammed you. Yeah. Right. Well, you know, and, and I like to... You can. You can completely manipulate them. Yeah. Well, and since we're doing this on paper at my institution, I like to, because I know what they're going to happen, I like to tell the students the day before... The, or the, la the class period four, yeah. we're going to have evaluations the next class period. Mm -hmm. Please show up. And I don't I just have an attendance problem in my classes, but you know, show up and give me an evaluation. Give me an yeah. honest evaluation, a fair evaluation. And I don't want this class is awesome, and I don't want this class sucks. Right. If you think this class sucks, say this class sucks because. But don't just say this class sucks. Oh, and lives. yeah, yeah. Or this class is the greatest thing I've ever had. I don't want to hear that either. I want to hear specifically what you like and what you don't like. And you know, you could even on paper, you get a range of the students who don't <laughs> who fill out the bubble sheet but don't give you the written comments. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or you know, that sort of that happens a lot, especially in the distribution level classes. That happens a lot. But of course, you know, with my majors, we'll get like pictures, and I tell them, don't draw pictures because I don't see them. <laughs> You're wasting your time. They're pretty tight. Right. Yes. Is that retyped? Yeah. Um, when we had paper, we actually got the actual paper. Yeah. Yeah. With my former institution, that was the case. We got the actual papers. All yeah. the places I've taught, that was always the papers. Yeah. So we could see if we were being burned in effigy and. Yeah. Yeah. Die in a fire. You got that Dying one, didn't you, Robert? Oh, it was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I showed that in a bunch of my classes after that and said, hey, at least the student had some passion. I, I did get a recounting, going back to, this is grad school teaching, and you can talk about timing, but I did get a uh, comment that was a word-for-word -word plagiarism of Billy Madison. Um, the whole, you know, uh, we were all stupider for uh, your, what you've done in this, this situation, no points awarded, and may God have mercy on your soul. Like, I got the whole, like, paragraph version of that. Oh, well, you know, did you, did you didn't attribute it, so check minus or something, but... Uh... Was he trying to be funny, or she trying to be funny, or was the How student... Would yeah, you, know, you don't know. Yeah, and that's the thing. If you're a student and you listen to our show for for whatever reason, um, you, 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 you one there's something wrong with you. <laughs> sarcasm doesn't come through in teaching evaluations right. in general, right? Because like it doesn't come through in thing. emails. You know, written right. version sarcasm is not a thing. Right. Yeah. Right. It just doesn't come through. Uh, one of my greatest uh, comments was needs to teach more creationism in the astronomy class. <laughs> Because <laughs> I need to show both sides of the argument. Like, there's no argument. But yeah. anyhow, um, you don't teach enough astrology in your astronomy class, though. Uh, I've gotten that one before too. <laughs> uh, uh, and these are all like these aren't major level courses, right? This is like the general science level course. 
And then, but then I've also gotten some very good feedback from students and I've made changes. Like yeah. I had students request more exams. Yep. And I thought, you know what? I was only giving three. I was like, I could work a fourth in, no problem. Or I had students um, uh, request that I don't cover this particular material so much because most people see it in high school and they would like to see more of this other material instead. And so I have actually changed or restructured my courses based on thoughtful comments from students. I think in a decade, I have gotten zero useful feedback at the end of a term. Uh, midterm evals, now if I do those, mm -hmm. you know, send out little surveys of it's just the simple one. What do you like? Why? What don't mm -hmm. you like? Why? Those I've gotten things that have been actually been useful. Uh, where I can do mid-course corrections for students because they want more of something or less of something, or it's just a, you know, each group's different. Mm -hmm. uh, some say, hey, I'd like more explanation why. There's some that want the, this is what we learned today, a little wrap <laughs> at the end, uh, or others think you're just wasting their time, you know. Right. Or, you know, we'll just go. Um, so you never know quite what you're going to get with those, but those I've found to be very useful. Mm -hmm. The end of the term, Okay, uh, the, here's a caveat though. I almost always have seniors. Um, so if I have undergraduates, they're seniors uh, or executives, and they just don't tend to think, why? This isn't going to do any good for me. I really don't care about the people that follow me. Um, so there's not much point there for them. So that, that could be a difference. Sure, sure. Um, um, but, but midterms, yeah. You know, halfway through, you know, I don't mean midterms as a vows, but halfway through the term, uh, a quick little thing thrown out on the CMS, because all of them have that. So you can do these little anonymous polls now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, those have gotten some things. Uh, and at my new institution here, that's been particularly helpful because these students are the nicest, most polite, most quiet kids you've ever seen. And they huh. will not talk in a group. But uh, uh, when I bring them into my office, like in small groups, can't shut them up. They got all kinds of stuff. And they're going on a million miles an hour, but they've been acculturated that you don't talk in class ever. Huh. Which when you have a discussion based class <laughs> is very frustrating. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I bet. And uh, I'm kind of pissing some of them off because I, I cold call now. It's just like you can't right. have a discussion if nobody talks. Right, right. So I'll just start picking people. So, so let me let me turn this a slightly different way. We're, since we're really trying to talk about this evaluations, and I will say I do agree with you guys. I, I get um, every once in a while I get something valuable from the written stuff. Generally, where I get my real value is is the one-on-one -on -one meetings. You know, I, if there's people that I seek out that are, that are engaged in the class, and I will say, hey, can you can you talk to me a little bit about something? Uh, and I will also do at the end of the semester because I do a lot of negotiations, and I say, hey, what'd you like? What'd you dislike? You know, what was your favorite? What was your least favorite? Little stuff like that, so I can actually make sense of some of this stuff. Um, the other one, I guess, I want to ask is is sort of the form of evaluations because I've seen now across you know three institutions uh, very different forms. My first forms when I was at Michigan State was, did you like the class? Did you like the teacher? There was only two questions, period. Uh, at Florida State, we had the, um, you know, 30 or 40 item version of this thing. And here I currently have, when, when I was doing undergrad, we had a, had a longer list. The MBA is now, I think, they've reduced it down to, I like the teacher, I like the class, and the teacher is ethical. Um, those are really, I think, all we have at this point. Uh, also, that was done, in, I guess, the, to drop from a longer list because people just weren't doing it. They said, well, if we get it down to three items, maybe they'll actually do it. Uh, what do you guys see? Um, well, well, like I said, we have two forms. And I, I should have brought my teaching evaluations home with me to prepare for this because I can't remember all the questions. I don't put a lot of stock in the bubble sheet mm -hmm. where they color in these numbers one through five. They'll have questions on there like, you know, I took this class as part of my major or yeah, distribution, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Uh, I worked as hard as I should have in this class is one of the questions. Very weird. There's always some BS version of a rigor question. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I don't, there's questions like that. Like, you know, um, is this teach, is a professor res respectful or respect us or whatever, those mm -hmm. kinds of questions. I put much more stock in the actual handwritten comment form where they basically talk about what could be improved, what did you like about the class. Those are the kinds of questions that are on. I think there's like four questions on that blue sheet. 
Hey, now, comment. again, though, that's what you are getting out of as the professor. What is right. you as the department chair or other department chairs or the tenure committees or whatever, what are they evaluating? As chair, what I look at are um, the written comments still. I still okay. don't look at the numbers. Um, I am much more interested in the students who take the time to write something as opposed to mindlessly color in dots. And so uh, I want to, and I'm looking for trends, right? I'm looking for things that are consistently positive or consistently negative. Are there any red flags? Are there things that are people, uh, uh, you know, that are doing being well done well over and over again? Um, and that's basically what I'm looking for. I, pretty much, I'm looking for how I look at my own, looking for okay. trends, because you know I've gotten to the point now where I've gotten, you know, I get comments like um, classes. Uh, not enough example problems. I mean, I could give example problems all day in a class and still get that comment because I've, I've very, I've increased, I've decreased, and I keep getting the comment regardless, right? And there's certain comments you just get over and over again, and there's certain comments that I will never address because I'm like, no, the student doesn't understand. That's not how you do this, <laughs> right? They're yeah. complaining, but that's tough. Um, so yeah, I'm looking for trends as to department chair and as my own evaluations. Do you see anything different at the tenure level? Um, I have. I mean, I can tell you what the difference, I, I can tell you what we do and how we evaluate yeah. at the departmental level and so forth. I'm just curious, do you, you know, because you guys are a teaching first school, oh. are they going to put more stock in the actual qualitative comments or are they still going to try to quantify something and use that as an actual formal evaluative tool? You know, I honestly <clears throat> don't know. Okay. I do. <laughs> uh, p and at all the institutions I'm aware of, uh, if it's a research institution, they'll look at basically the one, how do you like the teacher one? Mm -hmm. um, they kind of discount the, what do you think of the class one uh, for the most part? And it just has to be above the bar because tenure is based on research. So they have to not want you dying in a fire and pissing the dean off, essentially. As long as it's not pissing off the department head or the dean, you know, they're, they're happy to go. Um, at other schools, sometimes it's just an arbitrary cutoff. Uh, they don't look at the qualitatives at all or any other metrics. It's just, you know, we require, let's say it's a seven point scale. Mm -hmm. you know, we require a five. Yeah. 5.1, you're tenured. 4.9, you're not. You know, and screw you. Um, so it, it's pretty much all over the map. The, the thing where I think this is particularly important is, is it's pre-tenured faculty. Mm -hmm. and uh, adjunct instructors. They live and die based on the popularity contest generally of the students because uh, usually the classes are massive. So uh, we had one guy, uh, here the classes aren't big, but back at Penn State, there was a guy teaching you know these 700 person courses and they're not looking through the narratives you know, on, on that kind of volume. Right. They look at the numbers. The only time where I saw anybody look at narratives was if the numbers were exceptionally high or exceptionally low, and those were department heads trying to see what was going on here. Um, you know, why are they so high? Why are they so low? To make sure that something hadn't gone off the rails one way or the other, because you can get super high teaching evals and you could be tanking yourself for tenure. Uh, as sad as that is, it's true. Um, or, you know, they're too low, you can also tank yourself. Um, so usually that's followed up with more developmental assessments done by your peers. You know, if someone's having problems there. Mm. The one thing I'd advocate if you're new faculty is don't wait till the end of the first damn term. Mm. Uh, you know, you can go in and stick, you know, find out what it is. The first thing you gotta do when you come into a new institution is say, hey, what's the form? Uh, it's the first thing I did when I got here. I wanted to see the form to see if, you know, sure. are they gonna be assessing me on the things I think they are? And mm -hmm. it was pretty standard crap. Um, they're pretty much, I think, all the same now. You know, you get the the two numbers they really care about, and then all the other stuff. And there's always respect for diversities in there. Do I feel like they respected me as a student? Were they approachable? You know, could I get them during office hours? Kind of questions. Right. Um, stuff. But for a brand new junior faculty member, go and find out what the forms are, and <laughs> stick your own version in in the middle. Mm. You know, stick it in as assessment. Mm. You know, find a way to do it anonymously so the students feel comfortable doing it and uh, test the water because you don't know I mean they could be telling you you're awesome and 
trash you later or they could be very combative in class and think you're the best ever yeah. so um yeah highest teaching of owls i got at penn state ever other than the one class where both of where i team taught with another guy and we thought we should fail everyone and mysteriously cut perfect <laughs> teaching of owls which was bizarre because all we did was dump on how inadequate they were all term um was the one where i actually had an investigation called against me for telling a student to stop talking and there was this big thing and there was an official declaration that it was not against uh, policy to be rude because uh, it was determined I was rude but they brought in all the students and all these things and I got the best of owls because they said finally someone made them shut up because uh, it was a student that was always dominating class so oh. consequently I have all these things in my syllabus now on how to shut people up politely <laughs> and now the loose points and all this and now I've run into a group of students where I can't get them to okay. talk <laughs> That's I even put it out to him. I said, look at all these things where, that are there to keep you quiet. I said, please, someone say something. So they laughed at that. So at least they got that as a joke. But yeah, but junior faculty members, they can destroy you. And senior faculty members don't give a crap. They got tenure. I tried to, uh, my previous institution, one semester, I tried a midterm teaching evaluation. And I tried to make it as anonymous as I could by paper. Mm. It was like, it was crickets. You know, I got nothing useful out of it because they were too afraid. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they don't see me as a vengeful person. Like the students, I, I know that as a fact. They don't see me as a vengeful person uh, based on conversations I've had with them, based on prior teaching evaluations. But they just did not want to speak up. It's uh, kind of online. Yeah. yeah. And, that, and that was not available to me at the time. Right. Yeah. It's impossible with paper. No one's going to buy it. Yeah. So, but now, so. given the way reason all the these kids live so out loud online now. Hmm. That they just don't care. <laughs> uh, you get pretty, pretty uh, frank comments that they'll give them. But a lot of these evaluations, of course, they're easy to, as you mentioned before, they're easy to get sort of set up in your own favor. I mean, if you have a certain type of personality, you're probably going to get better teaching evaluations, right? If you're more introverted than an extrovert, you're probably going to get lower evaluations. And, and so, if you're younger, that helps. If you're more relatable to the students so it's not always about actual teaching performance think of a math professor who actually is a native english speaker mm -hmm. i mean you've almost automatically jacked up your points just because they tend at a lot of institutions to it's very hard to understand what they say mm -hmm. because well we suck at that <coughs> so we're always bringing in you know we always have to bring in international professors uh, i also know of a, a certain <coughs> professor who will remain nameless <coughs> who decided he was going to get the highest teaching of vowels and give the lowest grades to prove that they were uncoupled and succeeded. Um, so, you know, you can, things can be done to manipulate the system. Because mm -hmm. uh, everybody will say, you give higher grades, you will get higher teaching of vowels. Mm -hmm. And it's just bullshit. So I, I guess the bigger statement here is teaching of vowels from the perspective of a professor. Are you using this for evaluative purposes for yourself? So developmental purposes are using are they being used for evaluative purposes against you in some sort of way? Uh, so that be the tenure uh, raises or anything like that. So th those are the things we have to deal with here. Uh, if you're looking for developmental, you may get something out of it. Though I I think we're we're saying that the more that you move towards these online systems um, and wait to the end of the semester, perhaps the less useful comments you're going to get. So you should be looking to do it online midterm or paper and pencil at the end of the year. Those are your, perhaps your best ways of getting the, the developmental pieces. Uh, I think those you should be able to complement with other things. I would strongly advocate as a junior faculty, you get other faculty into your classroom. Oh, absolutely. Um, you, got it. Best. you have to get that stuff just to yeah. get a sense of, are you, you know, just a basic structure? Do you understand how to manage a classroom? Whatever it might be. Um, all that stuff is really useful. In terms of evaluative, you need to learn what they're evaluating. Thing. The senior faculty have been at, or probably have been at that institution longer. They can just tell you how those students work. Yeah. Because um, I, I consider myself relatively experienced now. And the students here have me, well, I, I got it now, but for the first month, completely flummoxed. Um, I mean, I, it was walking into a dead room. Uh, getting no feedback and no response and uh, not in an entrepreneurship class those the kids you can't shut them up um, but the strategy class just the sea of dead faces and it's just like 
Okay, I know this is fairly good. Just some of my best material. <laughs> I'm getting nothing um, to find that I was in a completely different culture. Um, that That's, I mean, I, was, I went and got the written right away to find out what I was going to be evaluated at, but I should have spent a little bit more time with some of the senior faculty feeling them out about what are these kids like. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, that would have really have been useful if I would have gotten somebody. Yeah. I would say they, they're very different. The, the three institutions I've been at have been entirely different populations, and it's taken me, um, it probably took me a good year to get my vows back to where they were when I left Florida State. Um, because I had, I, it was really a, a period of adjustment, teaching the same class in both places, to understand how this, this population wanted to be taught, what they expected, what was their experiences, et cetera. Uh, and then, you know, changing as well in terms of the makeup, <clears throat> moving from a place where our major was probably the second biggest major in the entire college to a place where our major was the second smallest major in the entire college. Um, it just has a very difference as to who you're drawing in, what people are interested in, and so forth. So I, that that was a bigger thing to figure out as well. Um, but the second piece is... Chris, when he, because Chris made a... a <clears throat> more, probably a more radical switch than either of us did uh, from where you initial your initial placement to your current placement yeah did you find a weird cultural shift uh yeah absolutely um definitely uh but i have to say and, and i'm not attempting to brag here but i have a history of do, getting good teaching evaluations even like first year at an institution I don't chalk that up to me being like an outstanding teacher. I chalk it up to me being personable. I I have like a conversational what style. What you're saying is, is the two of us are asshats. No, that's not <laughs> what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is that I don't think it's a, I don't think my teaching evaluations are necessarily a reflection of the quality of my teaching so much as the quality of my, per, of the, 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 I should say quality, the type of personality that I have well, in the classroom. Add into it, it may be the, the type of personality when combined with your area our right. our you know being in management if you're not personable you are outside the norm you are going to suffer heavily so you have to be personal right. just to show up whereas in your space i would imagine that's not as common right i would agree with that in general yeah. and so i and i so i think that's been a boon to me not necessarily that i'm the like outstanding lecturer mm -hmm. as so much as it's that i just have a it's just the way i interact with with people i'm a bit more extroverted than your typical person sort of in my field mm -hmm. if you will um not to play on stereotypes i don't mean to do that but um uh, yeah so there was definitely a cultural change um but in some ways yeah it was definitely a big cultural change other ways not so much uh because they were the same generation of kids mm -hmm. so some of those trends still carried over uh, they're still undergraduates, so yeah, I, I don't know. Um, I don't know where I'm going with this. <laughs> I guess what I completely do want to say is that yeah, completely. Useless. I, I, I guess what your I'm evaluation saying. of the our evaluation of this your, your feedback here and this thing was were limited, probably like a four on a five point yeah, scale. Not as not points. yeah, not great. I would, I would say though that if you're a junior <laughs> faculty member, definitely get that um, more senior person in your in your class. But I would recommend that you stay away from um, somebody in your department. Pick that person. If you're gonna do your own little evaluation of yourself, choose a person that's outside of your department but senior because they're gonna be less hung up on your content and more focused on, as we mentioned earlier, how you're teaching. Because mm -hmm. uh, they're not gonna be paying attention to or is he deriving this equation properly or blah, blah, blah. How is, they're gonna be focused on how are they interacting with the student. They're looking for different things. Mm -hmm. right? And um, it's just a better way of getting, I think, feedback. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, Stephen, keep going because you said you had two <coughs> things, and you that was the first. Completely derailed you. No, that's fine. This is this is a pseudo organization. Uh, the second point is on the uh, evaluative side, and I think we really do need to to make sure that or to recognize that teaching evaluations, as done as a formal process, are about uh, the evaluation. They are done for the purposes of tenure. They're done for the purposes of uh, a raises and the, and the like. And you have to understand what that means, what that what they want to see. Um, when I was at uh, Florida State, I was told if uh, you know you're below such and such point, we're in trouble. If you're above such and such point, you're in trouble. Uh, it has to be in this box. 
Here, it's, you know, uh, at a seven-point scale, if you're below five, you have to go and sit down with the department chair because you've done something wrong. If you're above six, we're going to give you a big pat on the back. You've done a great job. Um, and that's essentially the, the structure that we work within. Um, you know, if you're between five and six, they're just not going to bring it up as a major component. Uh, personally, obviously, I always shoot for higher because higher is better uh, or something like that. But um, it, it's because of the research institution and because of our culture – um, there is an expectation of where you stand. We actually get that at the end of the, the year. We actually find out how did your class stack up against all the other classes within the undergraduate? How does your, your master's level class uh, stack up against all the other masters within the department? And so you can see here you are, here's the number of students you had in the class. And that gives you at least a little bit of sense of, you know, what does this look like? Are you doing a, a good job compared to our peers? Which, which helps well, are, in that space. Are you... Uh, oh. Have you done a good job as assessed on the popularity question? Yes. Yes. Peers? Yes. Yes. I mean, that's that's, that's still true. Yes. One that was ever on that sheet. Right. 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 Yeah. My former institution, we did the IDEA forums, and we would get um, not only our institution, our department, but we would get like other schools as well. Hmm. That did the I. How how did your scores compare to other schools? Um, now with the paper that we did, the local method we get sort of your only the numbers based on institutional average. What's the mean? And I don't even think we get a standard deviation. Maybe we do. Uh, no, actually we do. We get something like that. We get like, what's the 85th percentile, 50th percentile and something else. I, and I, but the thing is, I don't really know, um, and maybe I should, but I don't know uh, what are the targets for various um, promotion and tenure decisions at my institution. Mm -hmm. And I've never investigated it because, like I said before, I, I tended to I've tended to do well on teaching evaluations. So I was more focused on did I have the service lined up, <laughs> right? Could I had did I did I could I cross that threshold? Because I figured mm -hmm. the teaching I I tend to do okay that in the past. So I and that wasn't my big concern. It was mm -hmm. do I have enough committee work and is my research in, in right. line where it needs to be for you know the institution. That's not to say I don't give a damn about my teaching. That's not what I'm saying at all. It's just I, I've tended to do well on those, so I wanted to make sure other ducks were in a row. And you haven't been on promotion tenure yet? You haven't been on one of the committees yet? I have yet? not. Okay. No, and a lot of these places that I've been to um, or have been graduated at or whatever, they tend to be black box. Hmm. Like, you just don't really know. Okay. Well, okay, now this 10-year-old data, but back at Oregon, um, they looked at two things. The rigor question... And what do you think about this instructor question? And mm -hmm. if you could peg both, mm -hmm. those were the people that would get the uh, teaching about awards and the extra yeah. money and yeah. the merit stuff because they went, ooh, it's super, super hard and they liked you anyway. Um, so if you found, as soon as people found out about that, then they gamed it. <laughs> um, and then one senior professor got the maximum merit raise promotion of $200 and decided he was getting ones from there on out because it was a complete load of crap. Uh, so um, there they were very focused on those two numbers for, for teaching stuff. But again, all you had to do is get over the bar for, uh, for P&T, and they cared more about you know how many pubs and which A journals. Right. Sure. Well, and let's add on one letters, more thing. Letters, I think, way more heavily... Um, than most junior faculty understand for P&T. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your letters from peers that were sent out. Most places you get to present a list, um, and then the dean kind of has their list, which usually comes from the department head, depending on the size of the school, because they may not know your field. Uh, and they'll usually send out letters, and the letters come back, and they will compare your record, your paper record, to the people at their institution and whether you would get tenure or not where they are. Uh, so those way more, I think, way, way more than any kind of teaching avowals, uh, sometimes even more than your publication record. Because mm -hmm. you know? remember, on P&T, they may not know your field at all, and mm -hmm. they're just counting boxes. You know, oh, there's an A, there's an A, there's an A. But if they get the letters back saying, yeah, they know how to play the journal game, but all this is irrelevant crap that will never mean anything. Uh, or, okay, yeah, they, they were supposed to have five, they only have three, but these are the three most amazing things we've ever seen. They're getting excited like crazy. You know, they're going to be a superstar. Give them tenure or else they're going to go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So uh, the letters, I think, play a bigger deal than, than a lot of people give them credit. 
Same but again, we, we've had this this sort of a conversation uh, prior, uh, previously in talking about the tenure process and, and what that means in, as a school by school uh, issue here. Um, that's something for us to figure out, you know, where you are and what pathing you're, you're, you're going to take. The more teaching oriented versus a research oriented or blended and the like uh, makes a difference as to how they weight these different points out pretty heavily. Um, one last thing I wanted to add on to this was talking about the graduate student version of this. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we've really been talking about this as being faculty. There is a weird space that you have. Now, as a graduate student, you can talk about this in one of two ways. Graduate student is cheap labor, and that's how we're going to treat them, and that's how they are basically going to be used for staffing, um, uh, staffing of classes and the like. The second option is that, that graduate students, uh, we're actually trying to train them and develop them to be good faculty. Very different models and very different things as, as to how this stuff is being put together. Um, you know, particularly when you start going into the liberal arts and so forth, there's a lot more of the, you're in grad school for nine years, we need bodies that way, you cost nothing. That's probably more in that spot. However, those people also, because they've been doing this for nine years in graduate school and they've been teaching four courses a year, there's an awfully good chance that, that you have learned how to teach by that nine-year period. I mean, that's a, a ten-year process and then some. Um, you know, when I was in graduate school, we were given no feedback at all uh, in terms of development. Here's, here's no thought as to what you should do. I was thrown into two classes my first semester as a graduate student, uh, not having come from a management major or main management background. So I didn't even know the content area. And I was teaching two classes that I didn't know. I didn't have any idea. And my vowels came back bad because I didn't know what I was doing. Um, and it was no one ever talked to me in any way, shape or form. I mean, I, I never got feedback and I would have liked somebody to at least come back and say, by the way, these suck. Please don't do that again. Uh, I didn't get anything. Um, here, what we do is uh, we have a, 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 it's basically, you know, it's a five-year doctoral program. The first year, they just worry about classes. The second year, they actually shadow a professor for an entire semester. They actually sit in the class they're going to teach beforehand. Then uh, they'll go through uh, two years or three years of teaching. It's three years of teaching and one, one course a year. And basically, they'll have people come in and sit and watch on the, uh, them teach and so forth and uh, give feedback. Faculty will give feedback, their mentor, and then outside people and so forth. And all of this was instituted. Robert had only saw this at the very, very end, if, if at all. This was only instituted because our vows from our, our students had gotten to the point of embarrassing. Um, you know what I said? If we get a talking to if we're below five, well, we weren't getting any of our students above five. Uh, they were all below. Um, such that, you know, we had a student win a teaching eval award when she she had like a six four on a seven point scale which is very good but it wasn't you know she was just so far outside the norm that everybody was just you know patting her on the back and way done well done well done um so th the point of all this is that if if you are in that graduate student space and you're looking at teaching evals a everything we talked up to this point in terms of developmental stuff definitely comes true go in and do all those things to get yourself better but b also recognize whether or not your department, your department chair, your advisor, any of those people who care, whether or not they care about your evaluations, the actual formal numbers. If they don't care, uh, it's a very different spot in terms of what you're expected here. You can actually go here and explore and try and, and do different things. If they actually are saying, if you don't get this good enough eval, you're in trouble, well, that's a different space. You know, that's, that's a performer's learn. On your job market, too. Yeah. Because yeah. some, some fields market, they want those numbers yeah. on how you did as a grad student. Uh, so you could be completely tanked and sabotaged if you don't get some developmental help. Um, we're um, the place I'm at now. All summer teaching is pretty much done by students because they're free. Uh, where faculty would have to pay overload pay. Um, so they are used as cheap labor. They try to keep the um, teaching burden during the year down when they're supposed to be. Working. <coughs> it's very odd. Because you think summer, that's when they're going to get their research done. And here, it's pretty much you're not going to get any done uh, during the summer because you're going to be teaching this obscene load. Um, and it's a four-year program. So it's, it's, it's too much teaching uh, mm -hmm. for a doctoral program of that kind. Um, my experience as a doctoral student was a little bit more like Stephen. I came in to the, the strategy program. And they said, do you want to teach financial accounting? And I said, sure. And it was just like, that's not even my department, but hey, what the hell? <laughs> finally learned some accounting because I have to teach it now, um, which was true. That's when I finally really kind of nailed down financial accounting. Uh, 
was from having to teach the course. And then I ended up having 10 preps because I'm an idiot. Um, I've just taught a lot of different courses and enjoyed it quite a bit. Uh, and I think one thing that Stephen pointed out, your field makes a big difference too. If you're teaching an entrepreneurship, kids expect a show. Um, it's, it's a lot more edutainment mm -hmm. than some of the other ones. I mean, you can almost guarantee perfect avowals by actually not teaching at all. <laughs> Bring in a bunch of entrepreneurs as guest speakers for every class and you'll get perfect avowals and the students will learn nothing. Uh, but you'll nail the avowals having not right. taught anything because uh, they'll have a really good time. Um, Shark Tank of the Week. Um, in grad school when I was going through school where I had this one instructor. He was great. It was fantastic. It was like best class ever. And as an undergrad, I wouldn't have thought any more about it. But as a grad student, then I thought, wait, I don't think I learned anything. You know, but I had a really good time. And I think I just gave him great avowals. But that's a really horrible class. You know, I didn't actually learn any content. And what is this costing me? Um, so so that, that can happen, too. So I think a lot of it's uh, institution and field dependent. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and my experience in physics was that uh, was kind of interesting. I was a high school teacher the year before I went to graduate school, and so I figured, you know, graduate school I would be TAing a course uh, my first year because why wouldn't you put the only person in gra in the graduate program with high school teaching experience at the time in front of the classroom? I was grading my first year, grading papers, okay. and uh, then the second year I started teaching. But really, in the sciences, especially in the physics, at least my experience has been, is that means you're just teaching labs, which you're sitting in, you know, baby, babysitting labs for a couple hours. It's, it's hardly teaching in many regards. I mean, you have a little pre-lab lecture that you can or cannot give, you know, depending on how much you care. And um, then you're just, you know, watching students do labs and making sure they don't electrocute themselves or whatever. Um, so I wouldn't say that, you know, there was much in the way of teaching at all as a grad student. Uh, grad students, I didn't know of a single grad student who actually lectured in front of a course, or even taught a rec recitation section. You could get training in teaching if you sought it out. And then generally, this was stuff that was given by the college, the college, the graduate, the college level graduate school as, you know, teaching programs. And I, I went to them and I was like one of three or four <laughs> in the class. And basically, the attitude was don't spend too much time when you're teaching. You know, you're here to do research. Mm -hmm. uh, and te we had teaching evaluations, but I, I, uh, I guess they allowed if you did well in them, you could win the teaching awards at TA, uh, which I did win uh, in, in my second or third year. Um, and I think that was the only thing that teaching. Uh, to, I guess they wanted to make sure you weren't so awful. But then again, I don't know what they do to you if you were awful with the awful vows. I didn't really know what the point of the teaching evaluations were other than personal feedback if you chose to care enough to read them and follow through with what, what had happened. Um, so, yeah, very Not different. Did prep, just from looking at the training that's offered from these teaching academies or the various mm -hmm. things that universities have for faculty, must be universally crap given they have a how to write a syllabus class that they'll, you can go and take for 10 weeks. Uh, yeah. that people must just be getting woefully underprepared, uh, which, yeah, okay. I get that as a doctoral student, you should be spending a lot of time on research. But if you're so ill-prepared to go into the field at all, that once you're in the field, <laughs> you're just getting slaughtered on your <laughs> teaching, that's going to eat up any amount of time you have to, mm -hmm. you know, do your research, even if you had the perfect, you know, three-paper dissertation that you can slice up and send out. Um, well, I, think I did something. I think we're going on both sides of this, and I don't think anybody's getting the happy medium. Yeah, no, I did something really bizarre. I, I actually took a semester away from my graduate studies to do a sabbatical replacement gig at my undergraduate institution. And I was told by people, you should not do this because, you know, you may not come back. You shouldn't stop your research, blah, blah, blah. And, I, and I, my response was every other job I've had in my life. Um, the first question I was asked during the interview is, what's your experience? So I think this is a good idea for me to do to get actual experience teaching because, you know, babysitting these labs is not teaching. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, there was no preparation. We had a little orient teaching orientation, which the first, you know, when we first got into graduate school was a waste of time. 
and that was it. That was the end of the formal sort of required mm -hmm. sort of teaching prep. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I think uh, I, the one thing that's going on here, there's been a real reticence to let the strategy students teach strategy because mm -hmm. that's the capstone class and you're pretty much sabotaging them in the market space because uh, a strategy PhD student should have well taught a strategy class. Uh, why are we having them teach OB? Um, we're, we're, uh, there's some real issues with sometimes I think uh, some of the more senior faculty forget what it's like to go on the market and don't understand that the market may have changed uh, the right. last 30 years since they were really on the market. Um, it's 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 not the same market. It's not the same market. My field is not the same market I entered into ten years ago, not even close. Uh, I and I assume other fields move at you know at different rates. Some are mm -hmm. a little bit more static. Pro some are probably even more dynamic. Um, but I, uh, we 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 could be doing our students a disservice if we don't stay aware, as as more senior faculty, what the market's like. Mm -hmm. Because ultimately, these kids got to get a job. Yeah. So, especially if we want them to be reflections upon us, which many of us have that kind of ego that we want our student to go out and do well. Right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I've been pushing pretty hard for my student right now to be able to get to teach strategy. Even if I have to go on the books as the person teaching strategy, teach an extra prep, and then let him come in and do it every day, you know, and then it all comes down on me. Because uh, the kid's got to be able to put down that he taught the class. So, yeah, there's a, right. some weird stuff. And, and different people are more receptive to that than others. So. All right. I think we have gone a bit long for this episode. Oh, so for those of you that are still with us, <laughs> congratulations. You've made it to the end. <laughs> uh, and you win three internets. Yeah. for stick it around. Only three? Oh, oh man. That's all we have to give at Jester Cat right now, you know, only three. If we had sponsors, hint, hint, we could give five internets, but uh, we don't have any right now. So, on that note, uh, please don't forget to leave us a review, comments, like us, subscribe us, however you're consuming us, just click one of those little buttons that are the positive buttons. Uh, you can tweet us at Professor's Life, you can email us, um, Chris at JesterCat.com Robert at JesterCat.com Stephen at JesterCat.com or you can visit us at www.JesterCat.com so for that that's all folks get back to writing <laughs> <laughs>